Welcome scholars to lesson 1-4.3. So everyone's dead. Today we're going to be looking at some of the after effects of the plague. Uh, but before we do that, a quick reminder of our mortality rates when we talk about this greatest of deaths, uh, the Black Death, the worst plague in human history. Um, the Black Death was absolutely devastating to Europe, um, not just to Europe, to China and to the Middle East and to India as well, um, but Europe was hit particularly hard by this one. Uh, the bubonic plague was the most common form of the plague. Um, that was somewhat fortunately so because the others were so deadly. Uh, but the bubonic plague was carrying away about two thirds of all people who caught it. So if you got the bubonic plague, you only had a one in three chance of survival. Um, other forms of the plague carried mortality rates that were nearly 100%. Uh, we did mention that the pneumatic plague was a little bit better than that, maybe as low as 90% in some areas, but we're still talking about best case scenario, nine out of every 10 people dying with that plague. Um, it was devastating, it was horrible, it ruined communities, it ruined families, it ruined lives, it ruined nations. Um, and Europe as a whole was just crushed by this thing. In the four heaviest years of the plague, about 50% of Europe's population died. That is half. That's four years from now. Look around your classroom today uh, or tomorrow um, and just imagine what it would be like if half of the people in that classroom had died, half of your family members had died and you start to get some small sense of what this did. Um, this map over here just kind of shows the rate of expansion. You can see it arriving in Trade Center of Constantinople a little bit earlier in some other places. And you get you know, our biggest trade centers getting it hit first. We went over that last lesson. Uh, those port cities, they got hit first, but it expands and it expands quickly. Uh, 348, it already reaches London. 349, we're pushing into the Holy Roman Empire. Um, and then we talk about, you know, 350, 351. Um, now we're getting into Eastern Europe, Russia, uh, areas that we haven't talked about as much. And we, especially once we get into Russia, we're not usually talking about Russia in the European sense. Um, but in those first four years, so our, our uh, orange, green, and this sort of creamy color, um, that's, that's a lot of people dying. Now, cities were hit particularly hard. And I think that this makes sense uh, when you know that cities are based out of trade and trade towns that have grown and expanded. Um, but the problem was that after the Crusades, before the Black Death, Europe is kind of, they're having boom times. They're doing really well. Um, they're not fighting any major internal wars. Uh, the, the Hundred Years War is going to hit them, but it hasn't really gotten going yet. Um, so cities were big and they had grown so fast that they were overcrowded. They were unsanitary. They had grown so fast that the cities themselves couldn't accommodate the population. And when you've got cramped population really packed into these cities, the plague is going to spread really fast. Uh, one example um, we've got the city of Florence depicted down here. Um, Florence, Italy had a population of 120,000, making it one of the larger cities in Europe in uh, 1347, 120,000. Well, four years later, they're down to 50,000. It's a huge population loss. You can see that's well over half. Cities are going to be hit harder than other areas. Um, and this one representation, this Florence, Italy, uh, this is pretty typical. Um, you see a similar drop in London. You see a similar drop in Paris. You see similar drops in Venice and Genoa. Um, just devastating the populations of these towns. Manners did not have it much better. Um, plague will quickly spread on manners too. The people who are fleeing the cities, um, Usually it's, it's gonna be the nobility with their servants. They realize the city is getting hit with plague. They gotta get out of there. But of course they're bringing the plague with them when they run. Uh, 
living conditions in surf villages on these manors were also pretty tight. Um, surf, uh, surfs live in close proximity to each other and the plague is gonna spread quickly there as well. Uh, so you see again about a 50% drop in the population on manors and this is gonna have further repercussions because fewer surfs means fewer crops are harvested. You've got sick people, people who are tending to the sick, you've got people who have died, they're not out in the fields doing the work. And this means fewer harvests. It means trade from those manors as those manors try to sell their excess products to the city is gonna dwindle down because nobody wants to go into these cities that are ravaged with plague. Nobody wants to go to a manor that's getting hit particularly hard with plague. Um, trade and travel just slow down during these four years. Uh, if it had completely stopped, it would actually stop the spread of plague. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't completely stop. It just slowed down. So the plague was still spreading. Now, there are problems associated with this. People were so afraid of the plague. They were so afraid of leaving um, the countryside of their farmers that the transportation of food into towns and cities uh, slows. So the people who are in towns who are trying to survive these outbreaks of plague are also dealing with food shortages. And when there's not enough food and you're not eating enough, you start to suffer malnutrition. And malnutrition is gonna weaken your immune system. Once that immune system is weakened, you're more susceptible to illness. And at the time of the plague, we're talking about, you know, more people getting the plague because they have uh, malnutrition, because their immune system is compromised. So we have plague causing food shortage, which is causing malnutrition, which is causing more plague, a deadly cycle um, that went on for years. So of course we then have tremendous depopulation. Um, the negative effects of this are somewhat uh, self-evident. Um, you've got fewer people in Europe as a whole, you've got trade is really moving to a standstill. Um, we don't have an exchange of goods, we don't have an exchange of ideas, and that's gonna be a problem. Uh, in some areas we have farmland that is no longer being tended. It's gonna return to forest land. And in some cases, actually a number of cases, you have entire towns that simply don't exist after the plague. They were so depopulated that the basic essential services of that town were no longer functional and the people just left. So we have towns that had been thriving in 1347 that are deserted by 1350, 1355. People just aren't living there anymore. So these are some very obvious negative impacts of a plague. It is important to note here, and I'm not gonna go into great detail, but depopulation is gonna have some real advantages for Europe as well. Um, a lot of change is gonna come out of the plague. And a lot of Europe's future advancements are due in no small part to this plague. So there's gonna be a lot of positives that come out of this too. And we're gonna dig really deep into that um, about two lessons down the line, so hold on to that. But as we find throughout, not just the history of the Middle Ages, but really the history of humanity, um, Jewish communities are the target of a lot of unfair persecution. And in the Middle Ages, when people do not understand germ theory, they do not understand bacteria, they don't know that there are these microscopic organisms that get into your body and cause all this problem. They didn't know that. And so Europeans had no idea what was causing this black death. So they revert to what they do know. They, they do know at this time that there's this all powerful God and that something that is so devastating must be done by somebody that's all powerful. It must be done by this omnipotent God. You must be punishing them for something, but they don't know what. So they start to grasp, okay, what, what can we do that will possibly please God? Oh, well, let's revert to what we were doing during the Crusades. Let's, maybe he doesn't like that we're no longer fighting these Crusades and we're no longer attacking heretics. So let's, let's look for these non-Christians in our midst. Let's get rid of those non-Christians and maybe that will please God and he will end this plague. And so they turn to the easy target, 
the Jewish communities among them. For example of how bad this got, in one month, February, in Straussburg, Germany, this was February 1348, um, members of this city gather up and burn 2,000 Jews, 2,000 Jews within their community are burned as a result of not understanding bacteria and not understanding what was really going on, just this, this fear and this insanity that was going on. And it wasn't just happening in Strasbourg. It was happening in other towns, particularly in Germany, but also in France and Italy as well. Um, the Jews became a target. And we see this as a repeating theme throughout uh, history. Um, this unfortunately won't be the only time that we talk in a history class about the Jews being targeted. Just one more example. As a side note to this one, I want to throw this out there. The Pope at the time pleaded with Christians not to do this. The Pope was an intelligent man. He looked at the numbers and he said, you know, if this is a plague caused by Jews, if Jews are, you know, somehow connected with this, because it was this belief that Jews were poisoning wells and um, casting spells to get people sick, et cetera, et cetera. Jews were dying at the same rate as everybody else. If the death rate in the city was 60%, it was 60% of the Jews. The death rate in the countryside was 50%, and 50% of the Jews were dying as well. Um, so Jews were dying. The Pope reached out to Catholics and said, this is insane. Stop killing these people. Um, but they still did. Jews were once again a target. Um, and this is really, you know, just the story of how everybody was dying during this plague. And uh, some because of it and some also because of it, because of the insanity caused by it. Uh, but bad stuff, folks, bad stuff. All right. Well, on that uplifting note, I will uh, see you in class and I hope you learned something today and I'll talk to you soon.